Hi folks, we're going to get started with chapter 2 today. Um, this is your preparatory quiz, so don't forget to not only watch this video, but also read the chapter before you um, take the quiz that is going to close on Monday at 9 a.m. Um, so now we're headed into chapter 2, That now that we've got through all the introduction stuff, which talks specifically about uh, chromosome number and how cells reproduce. So in this video lecture, uh, what we're going to do is talk very briefly about eukaryotic versus prokaryotic cells. <coughs> Sorry. And then cellular reproduction and how that happens both for somatic cells with mitosis and with sexual cells in meiosis. So it's a very uh, brief review of prokaryotic cells versus eukaryotic cells. Keep in mind that prokaryotic cells are going to be very simple in nature and these type of cells are going to be found in bacteria and viruses and some of the protozoas as well. So they are classified as having um, just uh, no membrane brown bound organelles. They're one big cell in the chromosome um, which carries the genetic material is actually the amount of DNA material is very small. Usually these cells only have one chromosome and they by themselves are a living organism. On the flip side, a eukaryotic cell, which uh, is mostly from our animal and our, or in the form of our animal and our plant cells, they have uh, membrane bound organelles and they actually have lots of intercellular structures. So the Golgi apparatus, the nucleus, uh, mitochondria, etc. So eukaryotic cells are going to have lots of genetic material that's housed in the nucleus um, and these are going to be uh, in sets of chromosomes, not single chromosomes like our prokaryotes. As we start talking about cellular reproduction, it's important to review that in order for genes to actually pass from one generation to the next, um, three main things must happen. First of all, the genetic information has to be copied. Um, and these copies then have to um, have to be separated from one another at step two and finally in step number three the cell must divide. So any cell has to actually go through this process in order for genes to get from one generation to the next. In our prokaryotes um, this process is very straightforward so up here towards the top of the slide we have our bacterium complete with the plasma membrane outlined by the dark yellow and then the intercellular um, mass which is the green squiggly line here is the chromosome and it's only one chromosome. So what ends up happening is as reproduction takes place the DNA, the chromosome in the DNA will replicate so our one chromosome then becomes two chromosomes and that signifies cytokinesis to take place so that the cytoplasm actually divides ending in a new copy uh, plus the original chromosome. So again very straightforward in prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells of course are more complex because they have more than one, um, one chromosomes. So in the eukaryotic cell, chromosomes tend to come in pairs. So again, uh, us as humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Cattle have 30 pairs of chromosomes. Therefore, there's a lot of genetic material that has to be copied um, at one time. And so keep in mind, we're still talking about um, uh, the mitosis here first. We'll get into meiosis um, in just a few minutes. So in the eukaryotic cell cycle, it's much different than the prokaryotic cycle. The eukaryotic cycle, the cell actually starts in the G1 phase, and this is where the cell is going to grow and get bigger, and all of those intracellular organelles are actually going to um, develop. The as the cell progresses through the G1 phase, um, it may actually be arrested in development so that it doesn't develop any further. And if it does this, it's actually entering the G0 phase. However, if the cell um, continues to grow and passes the G1S checkpoint, everything is okay, that cell is normal, has all the right parts, etc., then it can actually um, 
uh, move into the synthesis phase, which is the S phase. And this is where the DNA will duplicate. After DNA is duplicated, the cell will move into the G2 phase as it prepares for mitosis. And it's going to go through one more checkpoint, the G2M checkpoint. And this checkpoint is going to make sure that the DNA has synthesized correctly and there is um, one, co or one additional copy already contained in that cell. And if everything um, passes the checkpoint, requirements, then that cell will um, move into the M phase or the mitotic phase. And this is where cytokinesis and cell division will take place. When we look a little closer at mitosis, um, the it's broke down into four additional steps in addition to what we already discussed during um, what happens in interphase. That's going to be when the cell is in the G1, the S phase, and the G2 phase. Um, once the cell enters the M phase, or the mitotic phase, the cell is going to go through prometaphase, where spindle fibers are going to form on opposite poles, and those spindle fibers are going to attach to the centrosome of the chromosome. Then the cell will move into metaphase, where the chromosomes randomly line up on the metaphyseal plate. Finally, they'll, it'll move into anaphase where the spindle fibers start regressing and will separate the copies of DNA as they um, attach to the spindle fibers and move back to the respective poles. And finally, the last step in mitosis is where the cytoplasm will begin to split and make a new cell. So you have, um, you have two copies of the original, uh, or of the two copies of the DNA now in the form of two cells. So keep in mind this is mitosis. This happens in somatic tissues such as liver, skin, uh, hair cells, all of that good stuff. When we change gears and we move into meiosis, this is where sexual reproductive cells um, divide. And that process is, is a little more complicated. And in the plant, it actually looks um, like this, where the cell will actually go through various stages and have various copies of the DNA. So the ploidy designation, whether an, a cell is diploid or haploid, refers to the number of chromosomes or the number of genetic material that is actually contained within the cell at that point. So a diploid is going to be a 2N where two copies of the genetic material exist and a haploid is 1N where one copy exists. In plant reproduction, um, during the meiosis process, the cell will actually go through um, three different stages. So we'll start out with a diploid individual. That cell will go through meiosis, um, both on the male and the female side. It, that um, cell will then be reduced by to a haploid state where there's only one copy of the chromosome. Proceed through um, mitosis again and then down here after fertilization takes place there will be um, the two copies of the genetic material come back together in one cell and we end up with an embryo that is diploid in nature. On the human side, um, we've got on the male side the um, we also fluctuate between uh, or we move from a two n to a one n and then back to a two n after fertilization has taken place. So the spermatogonium has two copies of DNA. It's going to mature into a primary spermatocyte, still diploid in nature. Those primary somatocytes are going to mature into secondary spermatocytes, and it's at this stage that the cells are actually going to divide, and the numbers or the numbers of copies of DNA is going to be reduced from two copies in the cell to one copy in two cells, and then you're going to see further maturation. Um, and dividing of the sp secondary spermatocytes into spermatotids, still haploid in nature, and this genetic material is going to be packaged in um, the sperm. 
On the female side, very similarly, females have oocytes, and those oocytes are actually going to begin as oogonium, which are going to be diploid in nature. They're going to mature as a primary spermatocyte, still diploid in nature. And then that primary spermat or oocyte is then going to mature and divide into one secondary oocyte that contains one copy of the DNA and a polar body. Then that secondary oocyte is going to mature even further into an ovum, still containing one copy of the DNA, and that pole, and we're going to see a second polar body exist. So before fertilization takes place, we have a sperm cell that is one end in nature and an ovum that is one end in nature. And then when fertilization takes place, both copies of the DNA come together in the form of a zygote, and meiosis has taken place. So this is just um, a very brief overview of mitosis and meiosis, but realize that both of these process are, processes are actually going to um, have a couple of um, different methods of creating genetic variation. So this is where we see differences among individuals happening. This is why you are going to be different. Your genetic makeup is going to be different than your siblings. And this happens from two basic things. First of all, um, the process of crossing over or the exchanging of genetic material on chromosomes actually can take place during mitosis and meiosis. And this is where we see a shuffling of the alleles on the chromosomes um, moving from one chromosome pair to the next. So the chromosomes are still homologous. They're still the same. But each end of the chromosome is actually sharing um, or uh, exchanging alleles. So that's the first source of genetic variation. The second source of genetic variation is how the chromosomes line up on the metaphyseal plate during metaphase. So this is a completely random process and how that happens um, is really going to lend itself to creating variation in the new genome um, because the Chromosomes are randomly distributed among the metaphyseal plate in the maternal and the paternal chromosomes. And this shuffles the alleles around too. And this happens on different chromosomes. So keep in mind, crossing over is the first source of genetic variation. That happens on the same chromosomes. And random distribution is the second source of genetic variation. And that happens on different chromosomes in um, the metaphase process. All right, so now that we've come to the end of our second video um, prep lecture, uh, keep in mind that you need to make sure that you read Chapter 2 in addition to um, watching this video and take the online quiz by Monday morning at 9 a.m. Um, August 29th. Thanks. We'll see you guys in class.